Popo has more grades report for learning today. The school year is expected to end on the 15th of December due to the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. For an update, we now cross to our colleague, Mathaku Komani. Mathaku? Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, good morning, Desiree. We are at, uh, we are in Limpopo, actually. We are in the Moti district there in Donaldson, and we have been... Um, this morning we were at an area called Sterkfontein near Dafulkop. Uh, you know, we were tracking down a learner that we had spoken to uh, while schools were, you know, were still closed. I think it was earlier on in the month that we spoke to Mpochoma. And, you know, he was just telling us earlier in the day about his excitement of going back to school. And, you know, just um, that excitement of being able to be in front of a teacher and I think obviously continue with his, his education, considering that he hadn't been at school since... Um, March and I think there was quite an excitement and I think um, when we, we went to school with him, um, quite, he was quite disappointed that he was unable to attend, I think, the grade 8s and as well as the grade 10s were turned away. But I think... Um, just generally in the province when, when, you know, when we drove around this morning coming here and also travelling back towards Mozi, we saw a lot of learners you know, going back to school, parents taking their children to school. I think a lot of anxiety and I think excitement as well, especially from the younger grades who were also affected by um, you know, the, the closure of schools and not being able to attend since March. But I am joined by the MEC for Education in Limpopo, and she's going to just um, tell us a little bit about, you know, the state of readiness of the province, considering that it's, it's quite a rural province and the challenges are unlike you find in other provinces and also, I think, the issue of resources. But let me just uh, go to MEC. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you just please tell me, I mean, um, it's obviously around 10 o'clock, children are expected to be back at school what are you finding here in terms of you know the readiness of the province are you happy with what you're seeing on the ground yes i must be happy with what i see on the ground especially after watching your interview in the morning because sometimes we speak on behalf of the learners and not talk to the learners themselves so i could see that happiness in the boy and Lukoko that we're talking about that our learners are ready to come back to school yesterday i met all the circuit managers in the district we have 141 circuit managers 3773 schools each one of them were giving me a report as far as the classes, as far as the PPEs, as far as uh, learner, learner uh, feeding scheme and then scholar transport. I wanted each and every circuit manager to give me a report. And the report that I got was very pleasing that uh, they are going to have that. It's just that, you know, we have shortages of, of classes and schools and also other things. That is why we adopted what we call the differentiated approach. So those who went home, it means they've uh, opted for a traditional uh, uh, diff, uh, timetable, so they will come on other days, other days there will be other grades. But I'm happy that everybody's back at school. I can see the excitement. I'm very excited. And I came here to move this, the furthest, if you know Limpopo. So it's because I want to touch all the schools and be able to experience their challenges. And when I go and sit down in my office, I would know what to address. And also, I mean, speaking of challenges here, there was obviously the delivery of PPE earlier on when we tried in, Jul in June to come back was an issue here. What has been done to address that? And I think maybe also communication with the parents that children had to wake up this morning. What, you know, what, what is the plan going forward so that parents as well as children have a structured uh, idea and a timetable of what life is going to look like for them for the next coming month, for the next couple of months? No, no, you learn from your mistakes. Uh, when we started... Actually, with uh, COVID-19, I don't think we have textbook of what it is. So we learn as we go on. So after learning from the 8th of June when we started to open, we then ordered the PPEs then. So for now, everything is ready at school and just waiting for the learners. As for other challenges, we will still expect them to come. But at least we have the opportunity to sit down at stakeholders and be able to assist each other. And let me thank the SABC also. You are helping us to communicate the messages to everybody there at home. What I like now, our SGBs are very active, as you have seen. Parents want to know what is happening at school and all other things. You are right. We'll intensify our communication so that they get messages in time. And thanks to the SABC again for assisting us.
And also maybe let's 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 go back into some children haven't been at school and I mean even primary school children as well as some of the high school grades haven't been um, in school since March. In terms of catch up, in terms of curriculum, what is it that is going to happen as a province? Because surely um, you're looking to improve on uh, the pass rate that you also have. Uh, it's just that we can't blame Corona. Uh, nobody came with it. It found us. But we have to do the best what we can do. We have online lessons, as you know. We also have radio station here. We have Muze, a radio station which gives lessons, TV1, TV2, ETV, and everybody giving the lesson. But as the teachers uh, or education sector, we always say, in education, you need a teacher in front of the class. So today, as the learners are coming back, the teachers will be able to assess whether they were, the, the lessons had impact on them. And then we'll be able to uh, arrange extra lessons if we need some. Some are also doing the weekend lessons and everything. And as I was talking to you earlier, we'll arrange for learners to be fed at least twice a day so that they can also do afternoon classes and weekends to also be fed and be transported with scholar transport. Missy, let me just um, take a question from Desiree. I think she has a question for you. Desiree? The question for the MEC. Mathaku, before coming live to you, we were talking to the provincial leadership of uh, 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 COSAS, Skalo Masadisa, who was uh, decrying the fact that the MEC, he, he, he was saying his words were she's arrogant and she refuses to uh, engage with them. Uh, do you want to uh, find out from the MEC why COSAS feels this way? Thank you so much, Desiree. Let me see, I think um, the question that's being asked is uh, Kossas, um, you know, they, we were speaking to Kossas just before our interview. Um, they've labelled you as being arrogant and not being in a position to negotiate with them or being unwilling. Can you just please um, help us with that as to what, is, what are the issues in the province in terms of um, these, um, the statement by Kossas leadership in, in your province? I'm surprised because I talk with them every day. What I don't agree with them is that they go and disrupt schools. I don't think now is the time for us to disrupt school. We should join hands together and make sure that we assist learners at schools. I've seen their statement also saying uh, we must change the metric uh, paper and all other things. That is not within my competency. I can only take the message to, to the minister. As for other things, I will only work with them if they don't disrupt the schools. I told them, sit with me, let's discuss, but I will never support any program that disrupts the school. So maybe that's why they say we are arrogant. I cannot. Uh, I've talked to the prof joke of the province to say, if anybody disrupt the school, they must be able to deal with that person. We can't allow it. We, we can't, really. We must join hands and help our learners. You know, they need education. Some of them are very poor. In order to get off, out of poverty, only education can assist them. So I can't sit down with people who go and take out learners out of schools. We can't. And as you've heard that, thank you so much, MEC. As you've heard there, Desiree, MEC for Education um, in Limpopo, just telling us about, you know, that she, we know she's happy with um, the progress that has been made and where there are challenges. She says that she is willing to uh, address them. And I think uh, on the COSAS issue, obviously saying that uh, for her, disruption of schools is a non-negotiable, that there should not be disruptions of school, but rather let there be um, in engagement in terms of uh, what is it that happens within the education sector, with COSAS obviously being one of the stakeholders um, within education in, in, in the country. But I think as well as saying that um, capacity, she, she also says that the capacity in terms of classrooms, some will go for rotation in terms of um, some learners, you know, certain grades will come on, on certain particular days and also the platooning system and also just I think also telling us about that they're going to extend that school feeding where they will feed learners twice in areas where uh, principals have decided that they are going to extend learning hours as well as have children coming in in the afternoon. Matlaku, thank you so Back much you, for that update. Matlaku Komani, they're coming to us from the Limpopo province. Uh, let's talk to La